Today, I have a one hour English reading masterclass for you. We are going to read three different articles together. And as we're reading these articles, you're going to expand your vocabulary. You're going to learn advanced grammar and you're going to improve your pronunciation as well. Welcome back to GeForce English. Of course, I'm Jennifer. Now let's get started. First, I'll read the headline. What's all the hype about green coffee? Let's talk about this word, the hype. You might be wondering what this is. Hype is a noun and it is to repeatedly advertise or discuss something in a way that creates a lot of positive expectation. So let's look at this example here. There's so much hype about the new James Bond movie. Notice you can have hype hype about something like this article, hype about green coffee. You can also use the preposition surrounding, the hype surrounding the new James Bond movie. They're the exact same. So if there's a lot of hype about the new James Bond movie, it means everywhere you look, you see an advertisement for the new movie or people are discussing it. Oh, I can't wait to see the new movie. I heard the new movie's really great. I'm so excited. I'm looking forward to it. And it creates this positive expectation. So apparently that's what's happening now with green coffee. So if I hear what's all the hype about green coffee, it sounds to me like a lot of people are talking about how amazing green coffee is. If you go into coffee shops or stores, they're selling and advertising the green coffee. That's the hype. Now, don't worry about taking down all these notes because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF. So you can look in the description for the link. Let's continue and find out what the hype's all about. Green coffee beans are coming back stronger than a 90s trend. Now, a trend is something that is popular, extremely popular for a specific period of time. So think back to the 90s, if you can, and think about what were the hairstyles, the clothing styles, what were the trends in the 90s? Now, this article is suggesting that 90s trends are coming back. Coming back, this is, of course, another way of saying returning. So now you see hairstyles from the 90s or clothing from the 90s right now. Have you noticed that? And they're saying that green coffee beans are coming back stronger than a 90s trend. So they're even more popular than 90s trends, which are also apparently returning. But it also sounds like in the past, green coffee beans were popular. Maybe they were trendy, a trend, then they weren't popular. And now because they're coming back, it means they're returning to popularity. Let's continue. You might wonder why you keep seeing green coffee beans or raw coffee beans everywhere and what it means. What about you? Have you seen green coffee beans everywhere? I personally haven't, but maybe now I will start seeing them everywhere. Let's take a look here. You might wonder. You can also say you might be wondering. You might be wondering. And both of them are grammatically correct. So if you say you might be wondering, the emphasis is on right now. Right now, you might be wondering. You might wonder why. This sounds like more in general, but ultimately they are both grammatically correct. Personally, I would use this one in this context because I feel like the emphasis should be on right now because it's not in general you wonder this, is right now as you're reading this article. But just remember that that's just a personal preference. Both of them are grammatically correct and is just how you want the person to interpret it. Let's continue. Wait, are people really drinking raw, unroasted coffee beans? Yes, and even better, 
This unroasted coffee beverage is easy to make at home. Okay, let's start, stop here. Let's talk about this phrase even better. This is used when you want to emphasize that what comes next is better than what was previously said, although they're both good. So this is a great way to really emphasize something because you have one positive thing, then you say even better, and then you list another positive thing, and you're putting more emphasis on the second positive thing. For example, the promotion comes with a raise, that's positive, and even better, I can work from home. So this tells the person that you actually value working from home more so than a raise, which means more money. Maybe because you have young children at home and it's way easier for you to work from home and that is a better scenario than just getting a little bit more money. So, and even better. The end is optional. You can say and even better or just even better. And even better, this unroasted coffee beverage is easy to make at home. Are you enjoying this lesson? If you are, then I want to tell you about the Finally Fluent Academy. This is my premium training program where we study native English speakers from TV, the movies, YouTube, and the news so you can improve your listening skills of fast English, expand your vocabulary with natural expressions, and learn advanced grammar easily. Plus, you'll have me as your personal coach. You can look in the description for the link to learn more, or you can go to my website and click on Finally Fluent Academy. Now let's continue with our lesson. And even better, this unroasted coffee beverage is easy to make at home and comes with loads of health benefits. Loads of, loads is another way of saying a lot of or many health benefits. Just be careful with that of because if you use many, you don't need of, but a lot of loads of. I have loads of emails to read, for example. The only thing better than a new trend is a new trend that is good for your body. So they're saying it's positive that we have a new trend and it's even better, it's even better to use this again. So the second point is is stronger and it's even better that the new trend is good for your body. Green coffee beans are regular coffee beans that have not been roasted. So here you finally learn what green coffee beans are, have not been roasted. So you could also say that have not been roasted or you can say that are unroasted, are unroasted. You could also say raw. Are regular coffee beans that are raw, are unroasted, that have not been roasted. They taste like a mix between herbal tea and coffee. So if you have a mix between, it means some of the taste is herbal tea and some of the taste is coffee. That would be a mix between. And they're using between because they're specifying the two items. Let's continue. Now we come to the benefits, the loads of health benefits. Chronic inflammation is a key factor in arthritis, cancer, diabetes, and autoimmune diseases. First, let's talk about a key factor. Here, key means important. Now, factor is a factor, a situation that has influence. So here, the factor is chronic inflammation. Chronic, when describing a health condition, a health problem, chronic means that it continues for a long time. So inflammation, not just temporarily, it's chronic inflammation. It's always there. And it was there years ago, and most likely it's going to be there years in the future as well. That's chronic. Chronic inflammation is a key factor in and then the specific health conditions, arthritis, 
cancer, diabetes, and autoimmune diseases. Treating inflammation, so notice you treat an illness. If you treat an illness, it means you want to reduce it. You want to improve the health of the person by reducing the the illness or the symptoms. That's treating the symptoms. Treating inflammation can prevent and treat life-threatening diseases and makes for a more comfortable quality of life. Let's talk about this verb right here, and makes for a more comfortable quality of life. Why do you think that this verb has an S on it? Do you know? Why does this verb have an S on it? It's because when you have this and, you need to go back because the subject of the sentence is how you would conjugate the verb that comes after and. So this verb that comes after and relates back to treating inflammation. So this, treating inflammation, this is the subject of the sentence because this is our first verb. Now can is a modal verb, so you don't conjugate it. That's why there's not cans because you don't conjugate it. It's a modal verb. But treating inflammation makes for a more comfortable quality of life. That alone is a complete sentence. So this treating inflammation, this as a subject is it. It makes for a more comfortable quality of life. I made those notes for you. Now let's continue. Raw, unroasted coffee beans. So here we see the raw coffee beans, unroasted coffee beans. Those are the green beans. Raw unroasted coffee beans have both antioxidant and anti-inflammatory. Notice how you say the word anti and then you say the next word. So oxidant, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties that can benefit our bodies in the long and short term. So long term, there is no set definition for what length of time that is, but maybe that could be six months, one year, but it could also be five years or 10 years or 20 years. So it can be in the near future or in the later future. And short term, there's also no specific time for that. It could be one week, one month, six months, one year. It just depends on the context. So let's look at this sentence. What are your short term and long term goals? Very common question. Now, in this case, short term is an adjective, and that's why you see it with this dash. It describes what the goal is. It gives more information. So when I hear a short-term goal, goal, I think about right now. I want this to happen now, tomorrow, next week, and maybe up to a year. But you could have a different definition of a short-term goal. And when I hear long-term goal, I think maybe in five years or in 10 years. It could even be longer. But again, you might have a slightly different definition because they're not specific. But notice here, in the long term, in the short term, this is a phrase and that's why you don't see the dashes between. This is just a spelling issue. There's nothing different with pronunciation, but because this is an adjective, that's why you see it with the dash. So that's in the long and short term. And it's very common to discuss both long term and short term with your health and also with things like goals and priorities. So those are the health benefits. Now you're probably wondering, how can you make green coffee? So let's look at the directions. Gently rinse one cup of green coffee beans, then place in a pot. Now notice for directions, what, well, I'll ask you <laughs> before I tell you, what verb tense is being used here? Gently is not a verb tense. Gently is an adverb. So we can ignore the word gently and we can look at the verb. And what verb tense is being used and why? 
It's the imperative. The imperative verb tense is the verb tense we use with directions. Now you need to know that for the imperative, you don't have a subject and you use the base verb. So in this first step, you have two verbs, both in the imperative rinse one cup of green coffee beans, gently, <laughs> gently rinse place in a pot place in a pot. Okay. So we have our one cup of rinsed green coffee beans in a pot, pour, this is our verb, pour in the imperative, pour three cups of water over the unroasted coffee beans and bring to a boil. This is our verb in the imperative, bring to a boil. When you bring something to a boil, it means it once it starts boiling, that is the point at which you brought it to a boil. So the point when, when it starts boiling, that's bring it to a boil. Simmer. This is our next verb, the verb to simmer for 12 minutes over medium heat. When you simmer something, it means you cook it at a lower temperature. So you bring it to a boil, it starts boiling, and then you immediately turn the heat down. You turn it down to medium and you let it simmer. So you just let it cook for 12 minutes at a lower temperature. Pour again, pour the verb in the imperative, pour the liquid. So the liquid, because here you have the water and the coffee beans. So just pour the liquid into a cup and drink immediately. So pour the liquid into a cup. And so drink immediately. This is our other verb in this sentence that's in the imperative and drink immediately, I guess, immediately because they don't want it to, they don't want you to drink it cold. That's probably why they said immediately. So now you have the directions, very simple to make green coffee. So you can give it a shot, give it a shot, give it a shot. This is a great expression. It means try it. So remember I said, so now you have the instructions you can try it. You can give it a shot. So put this in the comments, give it a shot, give it a shot. And you can let me know also if you are going to give it a shot. So put that in the comments, give it a shot. So that is the article. So what I'll do now is I'll read the article from start to finish. And this time focus on my pronunciation. Let's do that now. Once all the hype about green coffee, Green coffee beans are coming back stronger than a 90s trend. You might wonder why you keep seeing green coffee beans or raw coffee beans everywhere and what it means. Wait, are people really drinking raw unroasted coffee beans? Yes. And even better, this unroasted coffee beverage is easy to make at home and comes with loads of health benefits. The only thing better than a new trend is a new trend that is good for your body. Green coffee beans are regular coffee beans that have not been roasted. They taste like a mix between herbal tea and coffee. Chronic inflammation is a key factor in arthritis, cancer, diabetes, and autoimmune diseases. Treating inflammation can prevent and treat life-threatening diseases and makes for a more comfortable quality of life. Raw, unroasted coffee beans have both antioxidant and anti-inflammatory properties that can benefit our bodies in the long and short term. Directions. Gently rinse one cup of green coffee beans, then place in a pot. Pour three cups of water over the unroasted coffee beans and bring to a boil. Simmer for 12 minutes over medium heat. Pour the liquid into a cup and drink immediately. Now I have green coffee beans right here because my husband roasts his own coffee. So here's some of the coffee that my husband roasted. So how about I follow the directions and make a cup of green coffee for the very first time. As you can see, I just brought the water to a boil. Now I'm going to reduce the heat and let it simmer for 12 minutes. And here is the green coffee. This is the very first time I'm going to drink this. And honestly, 
I'm not really looking forward to it because it did not smell very good when I was making it, but here it goes. Oh, oh my, that is not good. Oh my goodness, I don't wanna have another <laughs> sip of that. It's really strong, extremely strong. It definitely does have a herbal taste to it. So I see the mix between herbal tea and coffee, but that's not very pleasant. You can try it for yourself, but I don't think I'm going to drink any more green coffee. Amazing job. Now feel free to take a break if you want. And when you're ready, let's continue with the next article. First, I'll read the headline. This beloved beverage has gone viral but you might want to think twice before drinking it. Did you notice how I pronounced beloved, beloved? There are three syllables, beloved. This is important because generally when you have a voiced sound, the ED is pronounced as a soft D and there's only one syllable at the end. So that means it would normally be beloved beloved. And some native speakers do pronounce it as beloved, the two syllables, but it is common, more common to say beloved with the three syllables. Now let's talk about has gone viral. So the expression is to go viral. Here it's conjugated in the present perfect, but the verb is go and that's what you would conjugate. When something goes viral, it means it becomes extremely popular on social media and usually happens in a short period of time. So fingers crossed that this video that you're watching right now goes viral. To help that, you can like the video. So hit the like button because that does help videos go viral. Okay, this beloved beverage has gone viral. So this beverage is now extremely popular on social media but you might want to think twice before drinking it. Let's talk about this because we have might, want, and then the infinitive, to think. You might want to think. This is a great structure when you want to suggest something, but do it in a less severe way. Because notice this example, you must bring an umbrella. That sounds like a strong suggestion. If someone said that to me, I would 100% bring an umbrella. But if someone said, you might want to bring an umbrella, maybe I will, maybe I won't. So the article headline is not being very severe in its recommendation. And when you think twice about something, it's literally, you should think about it and then you should think about it again. This is a common expression we use in English. So maybe your friend tells you, I want to quit my job. I hate my boss. You could reply back and say, you might want to think twice before quitting. So you're encouraging your friend. In this case, you're doing it in a gentle way because we use you might want to think twice. So you're encouraging your friend to think again, consider it again to make sure you're making the right decision. Now, don't worry about taking all of these notes because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF. You can look for the link in the description. Now let's continue and find out what this beloved beverage is. The beverage, which is just adding lemon juice to water. Okay, so that's the beverage, it's lemon water. Has gone viral, we already know what this means, in recent years due to its supposed health benefits, including boosting hydration. Now here, boosting is used to say increasing. Increasing hydration, hydration is the amount of water you have. So I wrote that here for you, but the technical defini definition of hydration is your body's ability to absorb water. So you have the water in your body, but then being able to use that water as energy, that would be hydration. Boosting hydration, adding vitamin C, and being an alternative to sugar-filled 
options like soda or fruit juice. So these are the different health benefits, which is why this beverage, lemon water, has gone viral. Now let's talk about supposed. It's supposed health benefits. This is a very important word because when I read this, I know that, okay, this is what people say that lemon water can do, but it hasn't been proven then you can use supposed. It's supposed health benefits. So it lets me know that there's some doubt around these health benefits. We very commonly use supposedly the adverb form. For example, she supposedly stole the money. Now, if I got rid of supposedly, she stole the money. This sounds like a fact. But if I add she supposedly, someone said it, but it hasn't been confirmed. So this is just using the adjective form. She's a thief. That sounds like a fact. She's a supposed thief. So that isn't a fact. It's just what some people have said. Now notice this pronunciation, supposedly. There's four syllables, but here is just supposed, supposed. So notice that pronunciation different. Let's continue on. So notice that pronunciation difference. The trendy drink is all the rage. Some students ask me what trendy means because this is in a lot of different articles. Trendy simply means popular right now. So I'll write that for you popular right now. And all the rage, well, this is an expression. So the expression is to be all the rage. So you describe something as all the rage. This expression also means to be popular right now. But remember, you describe something as it. So we could say short videos like the ones you watch on YouTube Shorts. I do those as well. Short videos are, because we need our verb to be conjugated, short videos are all the rage right now. They're very popular right now. But this could change in a week or a month. So it's very temporary as well. But according to some doctors and dentists, it could be wreaking havoc in your mouth. When something wreaks havoc, it means it causes a lot of problems and it sounds very strong. So causes severe problems. Now notice the pronunciation of reek, reek. There's no W, it's silent. So it starts on a R, R, and then the vowel is E, reek reek, wreaking havoc, because it's conjugated in the present continuous because it's happening right now. And remember, this simply means causing severe problems. I'm not going to lie. I see a lot of effects on patients' enamel. Okay, so notice how we said doctors and dentists. So right now, who do you think is talking? Well, a dentist, because enamel is on your teeth. It's what protects your teeth, I guess. I'm not a dentist. <laughs> so Google tells me that enamel is the hard, white, shiny substance that forms the covering of a tooth. So it just covers your teeth. That's enamel. But it's important. It protects your teeth. I know my dentist always talks about enamel whenever I visit the dentist. Now notice here, I read this as I'm not going to lie. But that is not how native speakers say this. This is an expression, we use it a lot, and the expression is, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. So when you pronounce this, if you want to sound like a native speaker, don't say, I'm not going to lie. Say, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. You need to take better care of your teeth. I'm not gonna lie. You need to improve your English. So we use this as an expression before we share advice or a recommendation that we think the other person should follow. I'll read this again and I'll read it like a native speaker. I'm not gonna lie, I see a lot of effects on patients' enamel, the covering on their teeth, from drinking lemon water, one dentist said. So this is one of the reasons why we need to think twice or we might want to think twice before drinking lemon water. When I see this, remember this is the dentist talking. When I see this, I ask them what happened. 
Do you have acid reflux? What's changed? And they can't figure it out. So they being the patient, the patient, this is a conversation between the dentist and the patient. So the patient can't figure it out. They don't know why their teeth are in a worse condition compared to their last visit. And then I ask, so, and then the dentist asks, do you drink lemon water in the morning? When they confirm, so they say, yes, I do. That's confirming. When they confirm, I ask, do you brush your teeth right after too? When they confirm, so again, when they say, yes, I do. Yes, I brush my teeth right after. I wrote that down for you so you can see the short form. Yes, I do. And the long form, which is the full sentence. Yes, I drink lemon water. Because when you do the long form, you don't need to include do. So you don't need to say, yes, I do drink lemon water. It's just, yes, I drink lemon water or yes, I do. When they confirm, I now understand the problem with their teeth. The doctor explained that brushing your teeth after drinking lemon water is basically brushing acid into your teeth. I highlighted this adverb basically because there's another very common one that will help you sound more fluent, which is essentially. Lemon water is essentially brushing acid into your teeth. Now, both of these mean just like. So when you do this, when you brush your teeth after drinking lemon water, it's just like brushing acid into your teeth. So it's the most important characteristic. You can use basically, you can use essentially, it's a little more advanced, and then you can use just like, which is a more casual way, but a native speaker would absolutely use this and it sounds very fluent. Instead, so here we have instead to transition from what the person is doing and then they want to suggest an alternative. So instead of brushing your teeth after drinking lemon water, so if you wanted to include that information, notice that sentence structure, instead of and then a gerund. But because it's obvious, they just said it, you can just use instead. Instead, she suggested we brush our teeth before we drink it, it being the lemon water, or wait 20 to 30 minutes after. Alternatively, so this is another adverb you can use instead of instead. So this is, again, another alternative, but because we already use instead. You don't want to use it again, although essentially you could. Alternatively, we can rinse our mouths with water to wash away any acid and then brush. Finally, so this is a third alternative, but notice the different prep the different adverbs used because you don't want to use the same ones again and again. So now you have three new adverbs that you can use when you're suggesting another possibility. And I think it's obvious, but finally, you can only use this before the final possibility. I think that's obvious, but I'll just say it. Finally, you can drink the lemon water with a straw ah, to avoid teeth contact. She noted that this technique can be useful when drinking coffee too. I highlighted teeth contacts because this is the noun form to avoid something, which is teeth contact because of the enamel, right? But if you want to use a verb, you could just remember you need a gerund verb to avoid contacting your teeth. So it means the same thing. It's just a different sentence structure. She noted that this technique can be useful when drinking coffee too. I've heard that, that coffee is very acidic and can be harmful to your teeth. And I've heard it also stains your teeth, so causes your teeth to not be very white. So you can try this alternative. You can drink your coffee with a straw. <laughs> and that's the end of the article. So what I'll do now is I'll read the article from start to finish, and this time you can focus on my pronunciation.
This beloved beverage has gone viral, but you might want to think twice before drinking it. The beverage, which is just adding lemon juice to water, has gone viral in recent years due to its supposed health benefits, including boosting hydration, adding vitamin C, and being an alternative to sugar-filled options like soda or fruit juice. The trendy drink is all the rage, but according to some doctors and dentists, it could be wreaking havoc in your mouth. I'm not going to lie. I see a lot of effects on patients' enamel from drinking lemon water, one dentist said. When I see this, I ask them, what happened? Do you have acid reflux? What's changed? And they can't figure it out. And then I ask, do you drink lemon water in the morning? When they confirm, I ask, do you brush your teeth right after, too? When they confirm, I now understand the problem with their teeth. The doctor explained that brushing your teeth after drinking lemon water is basically brushing acid into your teeth. Instead, she suggested we brush our teeth before we drink it or wait 20 to 30 minutes after. Alternatively, we can rinse our mouths with water to wash away any acid and then brush. Finally, you can drink the lemon water with a straw to avoid teeth contact. She noted that this technique can be useful when drinking coffee too. Amazing job. Now feel free to take a break if you want. And when you're ready, let's continue with the next article. First, I'll read the headline, The Great Monarch Migration. So as you can see, we're talking about butterflies, a specific species of butterfly called monarch, monarch butterflies. Migration is the process of animals traveling to a different place, and it's usually when the seasons change. And this is important because People can migrate as well, move to another country for a specific reason, but for animals, it's when they travel to a different place when the seasons change. So for example, the scientist is studying butterfly migration, studying or perhaps tracking butterfly migration. Now don't worry about taking any notes because I summarize everything in a free lesson PDF so you can look in the description for the link. Now let's continue and learn about these beautiful insects. Unlike most other insects in temperate climates, let's talk about unlike because simply by using this word at the beginning, I know without reading it that this next point is going to contrast be different from this point. So this point is about insects in temperate, temperate climates. So this is going to have some sort of contrast to most insects. So unlike is a very powerful word to have in your vocabulary. Let's look at this example. Unlike other methods, learning English with the news, like you're doing right now, is interesting and engaging. So without saying this, it's implying that these other methods, it's the opposite of these adjectives because it used unlike other methods. Now, do you agree? Do you find this an interesting and engaging approach method for learning English? If you do, then put in the comments, you got that right, you got that right, which is a casual, very natural way of saying, I agree. That's right, you're correct, you got that right, put that in the comments. Unlike most other insects in temperate climates, let's review temperate. A temperate climate is one that is neither hot nor cold. So it's not an extreme climate, it's somewhere in the middle. So notice here, neither nor, because I'm excluding both of them. I'm saying not hot, not cold, neither nor, neither hot nor cold. So what about your climate? Is your climate a temperate climate? I live in Canada and most of Canada is temperate. Northern Canada where nobody lives or <laughs> very small percentage of the population lives would not be temperate because it is extremely cold, but most parts of Canada would be considered temperate. Monarch butterflies cannot survive a long cold winter. Instead, they spend the winter in roosting spots. 
A roosting spot is a resting spot. So it's where the butterflies go to rest. They don't live there permanently. They only stay there when they're resting. Now, a roost is generally used with birds such as chickens. And a roost is, as a noun, a place for chickens is usually a branch of a tree where birds rest or sleep. So here roosting is an adjective and spot is the noun and it simply means resting spot. Monarchs west of the Rocky Mountains travel to small groves of trees along the California coast. Here the word grove is a collection of trees, an area with a lot of trees a grove of trees. Those east of the Rocky Mountains fly farther south to the forest high in the mountains of Mexico. Let's take a look at here, east of. Let's talk about sentence structure for directions. You could say, I live in Canada, but then give the location, northern, eastern, southern, or western. I live in southern Canada. Now, notice my pronunciation and listen to the difference. I'll say it again. I live in Southern Canada. I live in the South. Notice how that vowel change. This only changes for Southern and South. There isn't the equivalent vowel change in the other directions. S, uh, Southern, uh, Southern Canada, ow, ow, South south. I live in the south. So if you're in the location and someone asks you, oh, where do you live? Oh, I live in the south. I live east of the river. So here you're just talking about a direction like on a compass. The river is here and you're east of the river. So that is the compass direction. Those east of the Rocky Mountains so here they're giving more of a compass direction. Those east of the Rocky Mountains fly farther south, out. Notice that pronunciation here, south. Okay, let's talk about farther because a lot of students want to know the difference between farther and further. The easiest way to remember it is that farther is with directions. So when you're talking with directions or with physical, physical distance, so which is generally with directions, so physical movement, but further is more hypothetical movement. You can think of it more as additional. So for example, does anyone have any further questions? I'm not asking you to go physically more I'm asking you more in a hypothetical way, in a non-literal way, additional. So if you can replace further with additional, but farther would be more distance, more movement. If you ever forget which one to use, I recommend using further because it's more common and native speakers are more comfortable hearing it. But to help you remember, oh, I put father. <laughs> it's not father, it's farther. <laughs> so to help you remember it, just remember that the word has far, which is distance, near, far. So that should help you remember that is physical distance and then further is more additional. Farther south because distance to the forest high in the mountains of Mexico. In all the world, no butterflies migrate like the monarchs of North America. They travel much farther, ah, again, because our verb here is travel. So I'm talking about physical movement, physical distance. So that's why I'm using farther. But you might say, Jennifer, can you give me some further information about 
butterflies or about how to use directions, for example. So in that case, it's additional. They travel much farther than all other tropical butterflies, up to 3,000 miles. So when you have up to, it's giving the maximum limit. So it could be less, but this is the maximum that they travel. You might see up to when they're telling you the time requirement, you have up to 45 minutes to complete the exam. You can submit your exam after 15 minutes, but the maximum is 45, up to, up to 3,000 miles. They are the only butterflies to make such a long two-way migration each year. So of course, two-way means they go and they return go and return. That's two way. And notice there's no S on ways because this is an adjective and we don't add an S to adjectives. For example, she booked a two way ticket. So this is an adjective. She booked a ticket. What type of ticket? A two way ticket. So that's why there's no S. Now a two way ticket is frequently called a round trip, a round trip ticket or a return ticket. So you may see any one of these three, but normally you'll see ways with an S when there's more than one, there are two ways to submit the assignment because in this case it isn't an adjective. Amazingly, they fly in masses to the same winter roost. What's a roost? Do you remember? A roost is a resting spot, a resting location. So to the same winter roost, resting spots. Now in masses, this means in large numbers, in masses. Often to the exact same trees the exact same trees. Now here, that's why they said amazingly, because this is quite amazing that butterflies have the ability to do this. So when you want to deliver some information that sounds really amazing, you can add amazingly as an adverb. Their migration is more the type we expect from birds or whales. However, Unlike birds and whales, oh, remember this one, unlike birds and whales. So now I know that there's going to be a contrasting point between how butterflies behave and how birds and whales behave. Butterflies only make the round trip once. Okay. So birds and whales make the round trip twice or they make a return trip, I guess. It is their children's grandchildren that return south the following fall, I guess, because the life expectancy of a butterfly isn't long enough to make the return. Does anyone know what the life expectancy of a butterfly is? I have no idea. So I am going to Google it, but if you know the answer, put it in the comments and we'll see if it's right. So any ideas, the life expectancy? Well, it's two to six weeks, not very long, which makes sense why they don't make the round trip, the return trip. It's their children's grandchildren. Wow. So amazingly, it's their children's grandchildren. So there are many things in this article we could add amazingly to. Amazingly, it is their children's grandchildren that return south the following fall. Let's continue. I'm learning a lot about butterflies. Hopefully you are as well and learning a lot about English at the same time. One unsolved mystery is how monarchs find the overwintering sites each year. What's an overwintering site? What word could we replace for site? Overwintering roost because remember that's their resting place, their resting site. We could call it their overwintering roost. Somehow, so by saying somehow, it's suggesting that they don't actually know how. 
Now we could probably use our, without even reading it, we could probably add our amazingly because I imagine what comes next is going to be quite amazing, amazingly, but somehow the choice that they had to actually expresses that they don't know the specific reason. Somehow they know their way, even though the butterflies returning to Mexico or California each fall are the great, great grandchildren of the butterflies that left the previous spring. I certainly think we could replace somehow with amazingly. It does change the meaning though, because when you have somehow, it suggests that we don't know how butterflies are able to do this. How is it possible that a butterfly flew, but then died? And then another butterfly died, another one died, another one died, and it's the third or fourth one that actually returned home. But that butterfly that returned home isn't the same butterfly that made the trip. So how do they know how to get back? So we could definitely say amazingly for that. They know their way, even though the butterfly is returning. Okay, perfect. No one knows, no one knows exactly how their homing system works. So their homing system, that would be their internal GPS basically. So you can think of it as their internal GPS or their internal compass. So here, no one knows exactly how. This is the reason why they use somehow, because again, remember it expresses that nobody actually knows. And again, we could probably use amazingly for this as well. It is another of the many unanswered questions. Remember up here, they used unsolved mystery. So for a mystery, you can solve it. So the opposite would be unsolved in this case, unsolved mystery, but for a question, you answer a question. And in this case, it's an unanswered question. It's one, it is another of the many unanswered questions in the butterfly world. So a very interesting article. We didn't learn the answer to some of this because we don't know the answers yet. They're unsolved mysteries. So now what I'll do is I'll read the article from start to finish. And this time you can focus on my pronunciation. The great monarch migration. Unlike most other insects in temperate climates, monarch butterflies cannot survive a long cold winter. Instead, they spend the winter in roosting spots. Monarchs west of the Rocky Mountains travel to small groves of trees along the California coast. Those east of the Rocky Mountains fly farther south to the forests high in the mountains of Mexico. In all the world, no butterflies migrate like the monarchs of North America. They travel much farther than all other tropical butterflies, up to 3,000 miles. They are the only butterflies to make such a long two-way migration every year. Amazingly, they fly in masses to the same winter roosts, often to the exact same trees. Their migration is more the type we expect from birds or whales. However, unlike birds and whales, butterflies only make the round trip once. It is their children's grandchildren that return south the following fall. One unsolved mystery is how monarchs find the overwintering sites each year. Somehow, they know their way. Even though the butterflies returning to Mexico or California each fall are the great-great-grandchildren of the butterflies that left the previous spring. No one knows exactly how their homing system works. It is another of the many unanswered questions in the butterfly world. Congratulations on completing this masterclass. Now, did you enjoy this masterclass? Do you want me to make more lessons like this? If you do, then put yes, 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 put yes, yes, yes in the comments below. And of course, make sure you like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And you can get this free speaking guide where I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. You can click here to download it or look for the link in the description.
and I have another masterclass I know you'll love. You can watch it right now.